I first discovered cookies and cream, they were always accompanied by their mother, Peony. Every time I went to visit them, whether it was early in the day or late at night, Peony would never be far behind. It wouldn't be long before I would take cookies and cream in and have my first real rescue experience. You all should know this by now because I only reference it in every video. Their video ended on a sadder tone so, so long ago. Saying goodbye after everything I had learned about them and grew to love about the two was the hardest thing I had ever done. But their story wouldn't end there. It would be a long and grueling month and a half of silence before I'd gotten a text from one of the rescue organizers that Cookies and Cream were on the adoption floor. It had been so long since I had last even heard of them, let alone seen them. I was just left to wonder every day what life would be like for them. When I got there, I recognized them immediately. They were bigger, sure, but still themselves. Cookies, of course, would be the one to come up to the cage, being her normal, affectionate, and fearless self. And at times, I got to see the same cream I fell in love with. <laughs> I would go to visit them multiple times, spending every day I could with them. One of the organizers eventually asked why I was here all the time, and when I told her a summary of this damn video, she told me she would let me come in to meet whoever would adopt each of the kitties. Wake me when you need me. And it wouldn't be long before they would catch someone's eye. Sadly, one of the people working that day had forgotten to let me know, but the organizer felt really bad and told me all about their new parents. That's right, Cookies and Cream got adopted together to a lovely couple who had recently lost a cat of their own. By the looks of it, the cats are going to be spoiled with their new home, fit with a large house, a screened patio, and surrounded by loving owners. It's literally the best possible outcome for these two. Think about it, right now, as you and me are talking, Cookies and Cream are in a home probably snuggled up together. And I thank you for that. I still think about them a lot. If they remember me or think about their old lives outdoors. But I'm beyond content with them always being side by side. As this was all happening, Milkshake had gotten pregnant. You may remember Milkshake for the very short time she was in the first rescue mission as Cookies and Cream's older sister and the friendliest out of the bunch. As we discovered Milkshake had been pregnant, a tropical storm was close to hitting around the same time Milkshake was projected to give birth. We didn't really have time to ask questions, so me and friend of the channel Nordo had to operate fast. We planned to bring Milkshake indoors so she could give birth safely. Not just that, but due to her friendly personality, she had a good chance at finding a home. So we headed out, and while we were there to pick up Milkshake, we met with some of the auto repair workers in the plaza who had told us stories of the cats, and had cared for them all deeply. They hated to see Milkshake go, but wanted what was best for her. Milkshake would spend a night with us and go straight to the rescue tomorrow, where she would give birth indoors the same time the storm hit. This rescue was one I had volunteered for at the time. They agreed to take her in where she would give birth to six individual kittens. Sadly, as the rescue put it, Milkshake was sick and a very young mother, and due to all this couldn't properly nurse, leaving four of the kittens to not survive. It was insanely hard news to hear. For a few months, I was pretty beat up over it. I knew there's nothing I could do and that the rescue did their best and that I couldn't leave her out during a heavy storm to give birth. We're only in episode three of these rescue missions. There's a lot more I have to cover and I am taking my sweet ass time with it, I know. But I would see many more hardships, difficulties and heartbreaking moments. But even with all of that ahead, you have to push onwards for a chance to help the next one. A few months passed and I never heard too much about Milkshake but it would be coincidentally that I would work a volunteer shift with that rescue. I was volunteering with these kittens that were ready to be adopted that I noticed a beautiful marbled tabby, a bright and alert with a soft meow and beautiful deep green eyes, who reminded me a lot of Milkshake. He reminded me of Milkshake so much that I sent out a text to the rescue asking whatever happened to her and her two surviving kittens. It would be revealed to me right then and there through text that the two kittens I was working with were Milkshake's kittens. The look-alike was a little boy named Squeaky, and the other one, a quiet kitten named Tara. Both would be adopted within the week to loving homes, and Milkshake would be renamed Penny and stays at the rescue house, surrounded by other friends and a loving owner. All of these stories were reaching their ends, but during all this, Peony, the mother of cookies, the mother of cream and of Milkshake, would spend her nights outdoors. It seemed like as every cat was reaching their ultimatum, Peony was just out. I would always visit Peony. She was a skittish cat at the time, always watching me from a distance. But over the weeks that I would feed her, I would spend a lot of time with her. 
I started to see a new side of Peony, but as time went on, Peony was getting larger and larger, and it became apparent to me that she was pregnant. Again. This took place early August of 2020, where the pandemic was still preventing TNRs from taking place properly, leaving situations like this helpless. Weeks would pass with Peony when a family emergency would hit, causing my father, me, and sister to drive up north. The very night before we left, I had visited Peony to say a miniature farewell and make sure she was well fed for the next couple days. When I had noticed, she was skinny. This could only mean one thing. I had searched and searched for hours, every bush, every tire, while she enjoyed her meal. Eventually, I gave up and just sat with her. She was comfortable enough to guide me directly to a bush where she laid on her side and revealed five lovely kittens all snuggled up under her. When I made it back, I went straight to work, setting up a trap for Peony and a carrier to carry the kittens. I had never rescued newborns myself, so I took every precaution, such as preserving the kitten's natural scent as much as possible. It would be a long process getting Peony in the trap. I, I wouldn't even call it a trap. She was pretty willing to go. It was embarrassing. When we all got back, I set up the playpen technique, which had worked well with her kittens earlier. I guess it runs in the family. Hot diggity dog. This place is magnificent. Me and my sister that night were eager to interact with the kittens, naming and gendering all of them. Going through the list, we came up with flower-based names in honor of their mother, and would name the kitten group the flowers. Pretty on the nose. <laughs> their names would be Lilac, a girl tabby, Tulip, a girl marble tabby with some white and a splotchy nose, Primrose, another girl and another marble tabby with white but had little wisps by her nose instead, Jasmine, an all-black girl with really slick fur. Thorn, who would be the only boy, who looks nothing like the family. These, of course, were not canon names as Twitch would name all the kittens, which they've done so well in the past. Peony was not thrilled with her new life. She was often hissy with us and we had to clean around her, but I still trusted her and she would never act out aside from an occasional warning hiss. Working with newborns was darling. In fact, we had occasional streams with Twitch, sharing their development and journey, long before they made a category about animals. The kittens wouldn't take long to open their eyes, just a day or two indoors. It's really cute. I don't think they could process anything they're seeing, so. And then there was this phase where like, they realized they had legs and they could move them. I didn't know what kind of, I, I, I don't know how to describe this phase. <laughs> they just kept rolling and swiping. It was pretty, <laughs> it was pretty nice. But the kittens were now level 14, which meant they finally evolved the walking skill tree. A skill tree that would branch into chaos in their teenage years, but for now, it was wholesome and cute. They weren't great at moving around. And I notice when they move and gain momentum, they don't really stop and just keep going faster and faster until they can't or hit something. I respect it. The kittens getting bigger and now moving around meant one thing. They were ready to leave the playpen. The kittens were now wandering outside to a new world. We fitted the entire room now that they were moving around with little toys and scratching posts and they were taking full advantage of these things. But the best toys they had were with each other, constantly engaging in combat while their poor mother was powerless. Peony was doing most of the hard work, I want to point that out. I mean, this is weeks worth of time that I'm trying to cramp into a video, and those early weeks are considerably the toughest. Newborns are very easy to take care of when you have the mom who does the nursing, the cleaning, teaching them how to use the litter box. So you just kind of give them rent. Overall, I'd say it's pretty fair teamwork, everyone doing their part. Twitch would see the cats routinely, every week actually, checking in on their growth and development. Eventually, the time would come where Twitch chat could name them. Nothing to fear, Twitch chat has had a great history in naming cats. So obviously, everyone's very excited for this. After five minute polls with the greatest minds online, they actually kept some of the initial names we gave the cats. Lilac and Tulip were cats that got to keep their names. They changed Thorn to Jasper, which is pretty cool, not gonna lie. They changed Jasmine to Espresso, Espresso the Espresso, whatever the f that means. And the most controversial name of all, according to my sister, was changing Primrose to Dolly. <laughs> 
It's worth noting, we all had our favorites. I really liked Lilac. My friend and mod that we never see on, Mookie Kitty, liked Espresso. Nordo liked Tulip. And my sister really liked Primrose, so the dolly thing was just salt on the wound. While this was going on, and we were having our fun, I got a message from a coworker from the shelter I worked with at the time that a newborn kitten had come in, but nobody could take care of them. A newborn kitten is a lot of work. We're lucky. But for someone who doesn't have a nursing mother, you would have to bottle feed a kitten every three hours, teach them things that their mother would, and constantly look after them. It's difficult and demanding for a lot of people. And they were scared that this kitten wouldn't survive, maybe even be euthanized, because no one had time. Coincidentally, we had an option. Mother cats could occasionally take in a new kitten. No matter what, risk would still be involved. One of these risks I couldn't find online was my mother finding out I took another kitten in. Getting a grown feral cat in took some convincing, especially considering that there were five others that were going to live under my mother's roof. Luckily, your boy is a master negotiator. We got through it, but a six kitten was out of the question. That aside, I couldn't let this kitten face possible death, not when I could help out. Plus, the kittens had a wide palette of appearance, and me and my sister were the only ones looking after and taking care of the kittens. So our plan? we take the kitten in, and with luck, they would blend in with the others perfectly and convince my mom that Peony always had six kittens. It's foolproof. So they brought the kitten over, and I was excited to see the newest member of the flowers. Me and my sister all giddy would unveil the little shoebox he came in, and <sighs> the kitten was all white. <laughs> Despite this, we stuck to the plan that didn't last long. When the jig was up, and it was up quick, Mama Apo was pretty cool with him. An all-white kitten Twitch chat would later name Marshmallow. Marshmallow would also be the only other boy in the florals, giving Jasper some much-needed testosterone. The kitten adoption was going well. There are cases where mothers can reject kittens, but I didn't want to tell you that to make you anxious for, like, no reason. All is well. Marshmallow was a little bit behind the other kittens. As they mastered their walking skill tree, he was just opening his eyes the day after, and he would have his classic kitten blue eyes that all kittens have as newborns. As they grow older, their natural eye color sets in. But that being said, we don't know anything about where Marshmallow came from. He could be a normal white domestic short hair and grow up to have green or beige eyes. Or... He could be a Lynx Point Siamese or even a Ragdoll. These breeds have been known to be completely all white at birth and even as kittens, only to grow up and have their appearance change. My own cat, Glacier, is a Lynx Point Siamese and when I got her, she was completely white with the exception of her tabby striped tail, only to grow up to be her. Marshmallow was adapting at a slower pace than the other kittens. While the other kittens were out playing with each other and the toys left out, Marshmallow could barely move. Which, poor Marshmallow, because the other cats would play with him and he was barely sentient enough to even process it. Detroit Urban Survival Training, I want to share with you what to do if you're surrounded by a group of men and they attack you. What you should do is this. As you can see, when you move in a circle around the crowd, you're able to attack each attacker individually. But he did have the best siblings looking after him, if you ignore them using him as a punching bag. Marshmallow being behind the kittens was sweet, because Peony spent a lot of time with him. And wherever Peony was, he was. Speaking of Peony, we got to see a new side of her I didn't even think she could have. When we started, as I said earlier, she was pretty standoffish. Even outdoors, when Cookies and Cream would say hi, Peony was far in the background, never interacting with me. Which is fine, she's a stray cat, and this is typical stray cat behavior. Over time, she felt comfortable leaving the playpen, and then coming up to us, and then even showing signs of being affectionate. The same way the kittens were growing, Peony was too. She even shared that trait with Cream, where they would jump and lean into pets. Like mother, like son. Oh, word for word, bar for bar. She was an angel, seriously. While all this was going on, the kittens had constant checkups with our local county care provider. And now Marshmallow was in the mix and was growing quick. Before we knew it, now Marshmallow could walk around and being weeks behind the other kittens, this would make him stronger. That's right, we were making a super soldier with Marshmallow. We trained him, educated him, and raised him to be the ultimate combatant. While Marshmallow was going through all this, the kittens were leagues ahead, which is tough. They were mini deviants who learned the art of crack 
Espresso and Tulip especially being little gremlins, and yes, I will single them out. There would be times where me and Peony would just sit on the sidelines and just watch. I feel bad acting like this was hard on me, as if she wasn't their actual mother. <laughs> Weeks of this, and these kittens were grown enough to finally be adopted. And this was tough. It's a new kind of rescue to literally see these kittens go from the very start of their lives to wherever they're going to go now. Wherever these cats went to, whatever homes they found themselves in now, we got to see their very beginnings. All of us. And now, you. You're kind of like their dad now. I would spend so much time with them just thinking about life. Sneaking in at 2am, fascinated that I got to meet some of the coolest kittens on the planet and even got to rescue them. Not just that, but I got to collab with the greatest mom the cat world had ever seen, which left us to the last part of this journey. Peony. Her kittens, Cookies and Cream, found a home. Milkshake and the two kittens she had left. Home. The kittens she just looked after and raised for so long were about to find homes of their own. And they would quickly, with Jasper and Dolly being the last to be adopted, but still found their forever homes. But what about Peony? Even to the end, Peony heard she loved being pet, but was still adjusting to this life. Who could blame her? She would still give an occasional hiss, but it meant nothing. But this hiss would always erupt into a purr and lean into pets. I think Peony understood what we were doing, that we were taking care of her kittens with her, and she wasn't alone. And I was super scared that the shelter wouldn't have her, because Peony would need an experienced owner, someone who understood her, and the only person that knew her was me. And as much as I could beg, I couldn't keep her. Peony being in a shelter could go well, finding someone patient enough for her, but it could go bad. Many people asked to find these cats home, so that's good on paper. Many stray cats would be euthanized if brought into shelters, and a lot of these stray cats don't like to be indoors. As if nobody thought, like, like the key to the whole stray cat issue was why not just put them in homes? Like, wow, dude, never, <laughs> never saw that coming. I was approached with the decision to either TNR Peony or take her to the shelter. I thought long and hard about this decision. I lost sleep over it, but I came to my choice. I wasn't gonna take that chance with a cat I cared so deeply about. With the help of the shelter, I decided to get Peony TNR'd. The place where I found cookies, cream milkshake, Jasper, lilac, tulip dolly, espresso the espresso. God damn, that's such a I hate twit. But for real, it, it was all here, and now it's just Peony. She was alone, for the most part. At least until I would show up every day with treats and goodies for her. After all that, I considered Peony a part of the family. And Peony now on the street was a completely different cat. And when I dropped her off, I talked to the store owner and even gave them food, where they were happy to help look after her when I wasn't around. They cared for her too. I wish I could tell her her kids were all right. I wish I could communicate that to her. All of them, cookies, cream, milkshake, the kittens, but there was no way I could. I'm sure she knows. She deserved better than the streets, so I made a promise that one day I would have a little place of my own. Nothing fancy, but something I could take peony in with my own cats. Someone who understood her, but someone else beat me to it. A fellow feeder coincidentally found peony and saw what I saw in her. She fell in love with her. There's a transport system named Bella's Promise that takes cats here, where cat populations are high, and take them up north, where shelters are a lot more sparse and have a higher demand to find loving homes. This feeder would take Peony to Bella's Promise and Peony would make the long drive north and wouldn't wait long before she caught the eye of someone. I like to think this someone saw what I saw, the same thing you saw. I'm glad he took her and maybe even glad he beat me to the punch. Some of you probably didn't get to know Peony. These streams and videos were a unique corner of the internet that's growing. Not everyone was there, but you know now. And now you know she's out there somewhere, safe and sound. Cookies and cream were adopted together. Milkshake, the last two babies she had adopted. All those kittens you saw this entire video. Even Marshmallow, adopted. And now it was Peony's turn. It's over, and it ended the best way it could have.